The facts about George Bush are these. He's 54 years old. He was elected to only one political office in his career. He lost two other statewide attempts in Texas. He was born in Massachusetts, but made his fortune in Houston. He headed the Republican Party during Watergate, the CIA during some of its toughest years, and he was envoy to Peking when relations with China were still decidedly shaky. Now, George Bush wants to be president of the United States. In a couple of years, the last of the Watergate tapes we recorded in uh, Mr. Nixon's office will be released, public consumption, or public uh, listening at any rate. You were heading the Republican National Committee at that time. Is there anything on those tapes that concerns George Bush? I don't think anything concerns me. I don't know what other people say about me on tape behind my back. That whole perception of people taping others uh, uh, profoundly troubles me. But uh, my life has been clean in government. My service at the party was to keep the party out of the Watergate mess. The day I took over, in January of 1973, at the initial press conference, I said this party was not involved in Watergate, and I am convinced that the party shouldn't be dragged down by Watergate. And it was tough out there. There was a lot of noise. There was a lot of insinuation and adversarial reporting and adversa accusations that weren't true. But I emerged clean. I kept the party out of the morass. And so I f don't fear the tapes at all. There are primary campaigns and there are other elections in other states. But here in New Hampshire, the voters consider theirs, well, something a little more special. For one thing, of course, it's the first primary in the presidential sweepstakes, and state officials thoroughly intend to keep it that way. But the biggest difference is that the New Hampshire primary is so small. For one thing, there are only about 750,000 people here, and the state's party registration system further limits the number of actual voters. So a candidate or his volunteer workers could theoretically shake the hand of every potential voter during the course of a campaign. So even Loeb's newspaper can't move New Hampshire voters to dance to any single political tune. And despite Reagan's conservative stature and New Hampshire's conservative image, even the analysts have learned not to kiss off the remainder of the crowded Republican presidential field. In this state, dark horses have a habit of becoming winners. At this time of year, the weather in New Hampshire is nothing short of glorious. But closer to the February primary, our candidates will be slogging and sniffling through mud and snow to win the votes of these good people. And if the tradition continues, the voters will be coming up with a few surprises to baffle the political experts. Surprises which could change the outcome of the conventions next summer. In New Hampshire, I'm Jackson Bain reporting.